Howdy, y'all. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but unfortunately, when you work in a greenhouse in the springtime, things tend to get a little bit busy. So uh, I've had a lot of things I've wanted to do filming for y'all, but unfortunately, like I said, it's it's been a little bit busy at work, so I haven't had a whole lot of time. But um I wanted to do a special one, get uh, get started. Uh, of course, as y'all know, I've done a lot on my mother's side, did a lot of stories. So, sorry, that was one of my cats. He uh, knocked my tripod around. Naughty little boy. Uh, and yes, that's another one there in the background. I, uh, boy, would you be calm over there? Oh my word, you you don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah, th this back here is Miss Ivy. She uh she's just woke up from a nice little nap. She didn't know that I was going to be doing this, so I think I kind of woke woke her up. But anyways, uh, like I said, I, I've been doing a lot on my mother's side of the family. So today I'm going to take a slightly different approach. I am going to do. A story about my dad. Not as much the DNA stuff. Uh, my phone. Uh, not as much the DNA stuff. This is more uh, like the stories, like what I was told on my mother's side, you know, the, the get this no thing. So I figured since I'm going to start doing my dad's stuff, I needed to uh, do videos like I did for my mom's side. And so I'm going to introduce you to my dad. Uh, and let's just say that there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. <laughs> uh, a lot of things that I already knew. And I, then there's a lot of things I didn't know that I'm getting information on even as we speak. I mean, I'm just, it's like tons of information and I'm getting I'm getting some uh some pretty good stuff to build for my dad's side of the family. So uh I don't have all the old pictures like I did for my mom's side of the family, but I am more than happy to share with you the pictures that I do have and uh let me put it this way, growing up in the same house with my dad, there were a million stories. Uh, there's at least one story that I am going to make y'all wait a few months for. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm mean, I'm evil, uh, telling y'all to wait. But, um, I'm, I'm, of course, filming this a little bit before so that that way I can post it on a special date. Uh, this first video for my dad's side of the family, I am posting it on my dad's birthday. So, um, anyways, let me just get started with his story so that, that way I can get everything set up and going and y'all can watch and enjoy his stories. So anyways, let's get into some pictures. Okay, so where to start with my dad? Uh, first off, he was a lot older than me. Uh, as you can see here in just a moment, he was born in 1921. Uh, I was born, if y'all don't remember, in 74. I was kind of a surprise child for him and my mom both. They didn't expect me. I had a brother that was old enough to be my father and a niece and a nephew who were a lot older than me too. Uh, my dad was born to sharecroppers who worked in South Fort Worth. That's where they raised him and his five living brothers and sisters. He had two that had passed away. This right here is a picture of him with his first wife, Margaret. Margaret is the mother of my brother, Donnie. Uh, it was interesting growing up with my dad, to say the least. Uh, he went into the Navy, as you can tell from the first picture, uh, after he got out, uh, he eventually became a Christian and started doing missionary work. 
Uh, he ended up coming home at one point, and as you can tell, he started working security. He loved doing that. In fact, he loved it so much, he actually started his own security business. Um, in case you're wondering why there's not a lot of old pictures of my father, uh, that's because that very first one you saw of him in his uniform, he always called that his baby picture. That was the very first picture that he ever had made of himself. Like I said, his parents were so poor that they couldn't afford photography. And so he, uh, he didn't have a picture made until he was a grown man. So every picture you see of my dad, he is an adult. Uh, and as you can tell, he loved his grandbabies. He, uh, by the time he passed away, he had not only his grandson and his granddaughter, but he had five great grandbabies. Uh, I don't have pictures of him with the two littlest ones because they were so little when he, he passed, but, uh, he did love them. He loved being around them. He just, he loved family. I mean, he loved being around all of his family and they loved him. I mean, he, he was a very lovable, enjoyable guy. Okay, so there is a short story, basically, about my father. Uh, like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of pictures. I, I know there are a few more pictures of him that are around. Um, I'm just not sure where they're at. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was my dad. Um, I am posting this on his birthday. I, I thought it was a very appropriate and a very fitting way to kick off the Garrett's stories is to do his story on his birthday. You know, I mean, if you'll look and see what the date was, you know, for his birthday and you'll look and see what the date is that I'm posting this on, uh, he would be 102 years old. Uh, yeah, I know my dad was old. Uh, like I, I mentioned, I didn't get that deep into it, but he was, he was 53 when I was born. Uh, I was one of those that I wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, my mother had been as if, if anybody remembers from her stories that I did back, um, September. October, somewhere back in there, uh, the stories that I did on her, uh, she had been through one failed marriage. And a lot of the reason that it failed was because her and her husband couldn't produce kids. Uh, they were married 12 years, and I know she told me at one point, said, I never even thought I might be pregnant. You know, and then she meets my dad, and uh, about a year and a half into their marriage, she goes, oh, Lloyd, guess what? <laughs> and so uh, they, you know, unexpectedly had me. I used, I like to tell people that they didn't do anything to prevent me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it was interesting growing up in, uh, in a home with my dad, you know, being who he is. So many stories. I mean, so many. I, I grew up literally at my dad's knees, especially whenever he was with his, his brother and his sisters, his brother-in-laws. They would sit there and talk about all sorts of family things. Uh, my dad grew up in an area, a uh, South Fort Worth area, that it was kind of known as Rendon Everman Kennedale. Uh, it, they were kind of all three lumped together. Uh, and they, uh, like I said, they just, that's how everybody thought of them was Everman, Rendon, Kennedale, almost like a tri-city type thing. Um, he was born, I believe, in Rendon, if I remember right. No, Kennedale. Oh, I'm going to have to look at this thing. Uh, anyways, uh, he was born then. Uh, in that area, and when he died, of course, he died in a Weatherford hospital. Um, 
you know, he was 72 when he passed away. Uh, it was right after his 72nd birthday. In fact, it was six weeks after I graduated high school. Uh, it was, it was a difficult time. High school was hard for me because he was really sick and with trying to work and help my mother take care of him and trying to do a full school load for high school, it's, it was challenging. <laughs> it was very challenging. It, uh, I know I used to tell people, it's like, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know, ladies don't tell their ages. They, they don't tell how old they are. And I, I'm sitting here, I was like, I was like, I want people to know and understand that, you know, if, if I look older than what I am, why I look older than I am. It's like, I claim every single one of my years, you know, uh, I'm not one of those that's, that it's like, oh, well, I'm 29 and holding and holding and holding and holding. <laughs> um, and I don't do that. I, I have, I have earned every single year of my life and I claim every single year of my life. Um, my, like I said, my dad, I grew up with stories. I grew up with stories about him talking about growing up in the Everman area, the Kennedale area, the Rendon area. <laughs> like I said, it, it was all kind of a, almost like you kind of slipped in between the three of them there pretty easily. But I remember all the stories that he used to tell me. I remember all the things that he used to talk about. Uh, he grew up, the, there's a road in the Everman area that's called Wilson Road. And because it was called that because at one point, everyone who lived on that road was related to the Wilsons. My, my uh, dad's mother's side of the family, which of course I'll get more into them because there's a lot about them. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, uh, like I said, he, he grew up in that area and he had all sorts of stories about his cousins and them growing up together and the things they used to do and uh some of the stories might not be appropriate uh <laughs> for uh, certain audiences but uh yeah they he had all sorts of crazy adventures and he did all sorts of, of crazy things in a way he was a lot like my grandpa rogers you know i mean he did actually, though, go into the Navy. In fact, um, uh, I know I didn't do a story on my brother. I, I did a remembrance of him, but my brother was born uh, December the 15th, 1941. History buffs would know and understand what that means. Um, in that in fact, eight days before that was the day that lived in infamy. <laughs> um, Pearl Harbor happened, and eight days later, my brother was born. Um, I don't know if it was because Margaret stressed out a bit, you know, with, you know, knowing that we were now at war, and he maybe came a little early. I, truthfully, I, I don't know if my brother came on time, was a little early, or, or just what, but... Uh, he was born eight days after Pearl Harbor happened and my dad debated really, really, really hard to go into the Navy or to stay home and take care of his wife and son. And I know I asked him about it one time and he said, you know, he says, the more I thought about it, said, the more I realized I need to be fighting for my country and making sure that not my new born son could grow up in a world where he wasn't living under a dictator regime, you know, like the ones like Hitler and like Japan were at the time. He realized that he couldn't do that. He, he said, you know, he says, the more I thought about it, he said, the more I realized my son deserved a free world. Um, my dad and my grandfather both were part of the greatest generation. They, uh, they fought in a war that was unlike any war that had happened to that point. And all truth of the matter, we haven't had a war like that since. 
the uh, the support of the people back home was unbelievable because people were giving up stuff to make sure that the troops were taken care of, that they could get everything that they needed. You know, the people at home did without a lot of things. Where in the, the war that we just had here a few years ago after 9-11 happened, you know, people still enjoyed their luxury items. They uh, they didn't give things up like they did for, for World War II. You know, and like I said, he just, it was a much different time. Um, you know, he, when he realized that he wanted to become a Christian, it changed his life entirely. Um, he ended up in the mi- mission field down in Mexico. I, I mentioned that just sort of briefly. I have cats and they're fighting right now. That's the hissing that you're hearing in the background. Uh, for some reason, they're deciding to be a little frisky right now. Um, anyways, but yeah, my, my dad, uh, he went down to Mexico and he, he and Margaret, he, they were down there for a while. And unfortunately is what happens. Sometimes the marriage did not last and my dad and Margaret divorced. Eventually, he met my mother, and she was more than happy to go to Mexico with him. It just never worked out. It didn't come to fruition. Uh, so he worked through a lot in the, um, like the the American South. Uh, he helped a lot of small churches get started. He helped them build youth programs. He helped them build Sunday school programs. Um, you know, he he did a lot to help small churches to grow. In fact, in the county where I live in, there are a lot of little churches that my dad worked at. You know, a lot of them, the, the programs that they have were because of him. He really, really, really loved being in the ministry. He loved being a preacher, he loved doing that sort of thing. And yes, I am a preacher's kid. <laughs> uh, I am. Uh, I was raised, of course, by a a preacher. So, uh, yes, I am a preacher's kid. He he never in my lifetime had a church, you know, like um, a lot of preachers would have. Uh, he had, you know, he worked in churches. You know, and he, he just, he felt like he was not called to be the pastor of a church. He was called to help churches grow. He was called to to help others, and and he did that. He loved kids. I mean, if you can see by all the, the pictures that I took of him with his grandkids, he loved his grandkids, and he just, he loved kids in general. He really had a heart for them. You know, he, he wanted them to know what it was like to be loved and cared for because so many kids, especially nowadays, they, they don't get that and they don't know and understand. But, uh, he, he worked with youth groups. Um, I, <laughs> I remember so many times us going into a church and it might be me and maybe one other kid. And by the time we got ready to leave there, there would be like 30 kids you know, and most of them was because of the fact that he would, you know, you know, get these kids to come and then get, you know, get the things set up so that that way they would have youth programs. They would have children's churches. They would have Sunday school programs. You know, he just, he, he wanted kids to have a place where they could come and feel loved and feel that, feel at home. Um, and like I said, he just, he really loved his family too. Um, you know, it, he, those grandkids had him wrapped around their fingers, you know, anything that they would want, he, he would do for them. And he got to have special times with each of them. Um, the, uh, three that belonged to my nephew, uh, we got to have them at different points and got to spend, you know, personal, like one-on-one time. Uh, Krista mostly because she, uh, 
she was the oldest one and of course she came over one time on her own and then she came over another time with uh her um her little her oldest little brother the littlest one was not that was my puppy dog uh the littlest one was not big enough to come out yet but uh he he got to have time with them i know another time my uh my niece and her husband they were like oh hey you want our two kids for for a day and oh let me tell you he was so happy and so proud he he took them to church and he just he, he was just like carrying them and this is my great grandkids and he was just he was so happy just to to be around them and he would call my brother and sister-in-law up and tell them like hey you know can I, I really want to come over and see the grandkids and my sister-in-law would call and say hey you know granddad lloyd's coming over you know bring the grandkids over and we would go over there and he would get to spend time and he just, all he wanted to do was to hold them. Uh, <laughs> you saw, saw the one picture there. Uh, the one that he was carrying around, picking up Easter eggs with, that was one Easter. Uh, that was a uh, Garrett that he was holding. <laughs> He'd just go around and have Garrett. He'd pick up an egg, stick it into the basket, pick up an egg, stick it into the basket. In fact, I had one really good picture, and I didn't put it up because my dad probably would have come out of his grave on me on this one. But I had got a good picture of him. He had just turned around, bent over, and it was a nice picture of his backside. <laughs> he did not like that picture. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I was nice, and I didn't put that one up. I, I put ones where you could see his actual face. But yeah, he he loved family, uh, and it was hard, of course, letting him go. Um, you know, I mean, what what more can you say? Um, and by the way, since I am now starting the Garrett side, uh, you'll probably hear a few stories that my dad related to me of him growing up and growing up with his cousins. And, uh, you know, growing up in his family and the things that happened and the things that went on, it's like I said, he, he talked a lot about his family. So it's, uh, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> uh, I think that's where I started getting my love of family is listening to him talk all the time. And then of course my mom and my uncle just sort of added more to it. But, uh, anyways, that's it for right now. And, uh, y'all don't forget. There's that nice little red comment button down there. Or, uh, not comment, but subscribe button. Uh, sorry, it's been a long day. There's the, the subscribe button. Take and hit it, if you will, if you haven't already. If, you, if you've already done it, you don't have to do it again because it's no longer red. It's You've already subscribed. But uh, if it's red, hit it, subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up. You know, let, let me know that you enjoyed the video. Um leave a comment. You know, uh, if you're one of my family or friends who knew my dad, you know, tell me something that you really liked about him. Uh, tell me a favorite memory you had. Tell me something that, that you remember about my dad, uh, growing up. Um, you know, because like I said, he knew so many people. Uh, and also too, you know, feel free to share. You know, if you think that it was some good stories, you know, feel free to share it. You know, if you think someone would enjoy it, get a good laugh out of it, or, uh, you know, maybe he looks like someone. <laughs> and I know uh, there was some of his Wilson cousins that they resembled each other big time. In fact, uh, Jack Wilson and him, except for the fact that Jack was a little bit taller and a little more bulky. Uh, I'm, he wasn't fat. He just, he had more chest and more, uh, upper body than what my dad did. He, he was just a bigger man. Uh, but they looked a lot alike. In fact, if you just looked at them in the face, they would look like twins. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you're looking at that and you're thinking, man, you know, that looks like, you know, some member of my family, there's a good chance that we might be related. Um, but anyways, you know, like I said, you know, share it if, if you feel like, you know, maybe someone in your family looks like him. You know, 
maybe your your relative would go, hey, you know what? I think that that was Cousin Lloyd, you know, or Uncle Lloyd or, you know, whoever. So just, you know, like I said, feel free because uh, that's how that's how you find family, right? You uh, you share information and someone goes, you know, this looks like someone I used to know. <laughs> anyway so uh you know like i said like uh you know subscribe like comment share and um i'll see y'all in the next video bye